The identity matrix is a square matrix that has all ones along the main diagonal, all zeros everywhere else. So we could have a two by two square matrix, or a three by three, or a four by four. If we get all ones along the main diagonal, all zeros everywhere else, that's the identity matrix for that particular size of matrix. The go back one second, I'm sorry. Maybe let's put it away first. Main diagonal always goes from top left to lower right. Good question. Okay. All right, so we're going to call that the identity matrix, or we'll just call it, label it a capital I. Okay. The inverse of a matrix. Yes. Okay, thank you. Let A be an n by n matrix, and let I sub n be the identity matrix for that n by n matrix. If there is a, a an inverse matrix, what happens is A times the inverse equals the identity. And the inverse times A also equals the identity. If that's the case, then A inverse is called the inverse, and that symbol A to the negative 1 is read A inverse. So when we multiply a matrix times its identity, we'll get the, times its inverse, we'll get the identity. Okay. It's like multiplying 2 times 1 half. 1 half's inverse is 2, and vice versa. We get the identity, which is 1 for multiplication. Adding 3 and negative 3 gives us the identity for addition, which was 0. Okay. Everybody ready? All right, so we want to show that B is the inverse of A. So A is a 2 by 2 matrix with row 1 having 4 and 5 as its elements and row 2 having 3 and 4 as its elements. B is also a 2 by 2, with row 1 having 4 and negative 5 as its elements, and th negative 3 and 4 as the elements of row 2. So, if these two are inverses of each other, we should get the identity when we multiply them. Okay? 2 by 2 times a 2 by 2 will be a 2 by 2. This first element is the first row, first column. So we take the first row times the first column. 4 times 4, 5 times 3, 16 and negative 15. First row, second column element. We're going to take the first row times the second column. 4 times negative 5. And 5 times 4. Negative 20 and 20. So far, so good. This element is the second row, first column. So 12, negative 12. And 3 times negative 5 and 4 times 4. Negative 15 and 16, 1. Because A times B got us the identity. 
B is the inverse of A. Good question. Okay. We notice a diagonal here, 4 and 4. We notice a diagonal here, 3 and 5, but negative 3, negative 5. Okay. Good pattern. Good way to notice it. Okay. But it won't always work. Okay. Yeah. It usually should be yes. The diagonal here, when we multiply these, this is 16. The diagonal here is... 15, 16 minus 15 is 1, so it's got a determinant of 1, and we'll talk about it in just a moment. And because the determinant's 1, yes, we you switch things up and change and multiply by the determinant, but because the determinant's 1, it's easy to see that it's, these are inverses. Yes, sir? Bottom left. And we took, this is our first row, our second row, first column. So if we take our second row times our first column, 3 times 4 is 12, and 4 times a negative 3 is negative 12. Okay? All right. Shall we do take B times A, make sure it's the, the identity, or do you trust me? Okay, Rachel. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So when we're looking at these, let's try it one more time. I should have written them out. So we are going to get a 2 by 2 and make it much larger this time. Okay? So when we're in this spot, this is the first row, and this is the second row. And we have our first column and our second column. So when we're in this spot, it's the first row, first column spot. Okay? So that means that of this, this one, we're going to take this row times this column. So we take the 4 times the 4, and we add it to the 5 times the negative 3. So 4 times 4 was 16. 5 times negative 3 was negative 15. So 16 and negative 15 gets us our 1. Okay. Now this position is the first row, second column. So if it's the first in the first row and the second column, then that means that we're going to take the first row of our first matrix times the second column of our second matrix. So our first row times our second column, now we're still in this row, but we're going to take it times this column. So 4 times a negative 5, and 5 times 4. So negative 20, positive 20, 0. Now we're in our second row in our first column in this spot. So we have to take our second row times this first column. So when we do that, we'll have our 3 times our 4. And we'll have our 4 times our negative 3. So 12 minus 12, gone. And then lastly, we need to be figuring out what this second row, second column spot is, what goes here. So we take our second row times our second column, and 3 times negative 5 plus 4 times 4. So negative 15 and a positive 16 gets us a 1. Okay? Yes, sir. Same, same process, but you'll now, if you had a 3 by 3, we have a first row, a second row, and a third row, and a first column, 
and a second column and a third column. So when you're trying to find the first row times first column, that means you're going to take the first row, those three elements in the first row, times the, the three elements in, this, in the first column. Multiply, 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 add, add those three together, the three products. Okay? And we'll look at that again. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay? All right. The inverse of a matrix is found by a process. Okay? We have a two by two. We'll start with that two by two, and then we'll practice it with a three by three. Matrix A has one, negative two, negative one, and three for its elements. And what we do is we write that matrix with the identity matrix for a two by two added on the end. And then we perform our elementary row operations like we have been to get the identity matrix on the left-hand side to get it in reduced row echelon form. And then we check by multiplying. Okay. So let's do that. We're starting out with this, but we're going to rewrite it as 1, negative 2, negative 1, 3, and then we're going to put the identity matrix behind it. Now our goal is to get the identity matrix on the left-hand side. So what can we do to start getting zeros, or at least to get a zero in this spot? Add them together and replace row 2 with the sum of row 1 and row 2, right? Okay. So when we do that, 1 plus negative 1, negative 2 and 3, sure, I'm sorry. Okay, so we're going to go with a 1 plus the negative 1, a 3, pl or a, a 3 plus the negative 2, a 0 plus 1, and a 1 plus 0. Okay, by doing that, we end up with a 0. 1, 1, 1. Okay. Now this is almost where it needs to be. It has a leading 1. What needs to be in this spot? A 0. Okay. So we want to have a 0 in this spot. To get a zero in this spot, we can take row two of this one times two and add it to that one. So we're taking row two times two and adding it to this guy. So row 2 times 2 is going to be 2 times 0, and we're going to add that to a 1. And we'll have 2 times 1, adding that to the negative 2. We'll have a 2 times 1, adding that to the 1, and then a 2 times 1, adding that to the 0. So 2 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 1, 
2 times 1 is 2, plus negative 2 is? And then 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is? And 2 times 1 is 2, plus 0 is? Now we have the identity matrix on the left-hand side. This is the inverse. So this was A. That means that this will be A inverse. Yep. For your answer, you write out a new matrix that has 3, 2, 1, 1. And then you check yourself to make sure you found it. Okay? To check yourself to make sure you found it, you want to make sure that when I multiply A times A inverse, I get the identity. Make this a little bit bigger. Okay? So A times A inverse, this is my first row, first column spot. So I'm going to take the first row of A, 1, times the first column of, let's do this in color. Okay, we're going to take our first row times our first column. So we're going to take the 1 times the 3. And we're adding the negative 2 times the 1. Okay. So what is uh, 1 times 3 minus 2? Okay. Then we're going to take the first row times the second column. So 1 times 2 plus negative 2 times 1. So 2 minus 2, 0. Now we're going to take the second row times the first column. So negative 1 times 3 plus 1 times 3. So negative 3 plus 3. And lastly, second row times the second column. So negative 1 times 2 plus 3 times 1. So negative 2 plus 3 gives us 1. Okay, so we found the, in, the uh, um, inverse. When we multiplied the inverse times the original, we got the identity. This is the inverse, yes. So we found our, our inverse. When we multiplied the original times the inverse, we got the identity. That was just checking it. But this, is, this guy up here is your answer. Should make yes. It should yep. The ident the identity. Okay. So here's a three by three. <laughs> I won't make you do the four by fours. I am not going to require it. I think it's just excessive. Mm -hmm. If they exist. All right, so rewrite it with the matrix with the identity at the end.
Mm -hmm. So yes, if we already have a one in this spot, we're in great shape. We don't want to mess with that. Okay, we can add row three and row one. If we add row three and row one, where are we repla what are we, re we replacing? Row one. So row three plus row one going into row one spot. Why did you want to do that? We're, we're leveraging this zero to make this, this one go away. Okay? So when we do that, uh, we like to keep that one in the uh, leading one. So that's the one. Okay. So when we do that, we'll have a one here because one plus zero is one. One plus negative one. One plus zero. 1 plus 0, 0 plus 0, and 0 plus 1. Okay. What else do we want to do? I like top by negative 3, add it to row 2. We take row 1 times negative 3 and add it to row 2. Um, good question. You could use a new one. I like the idea of using um, the original because if we put a add a negative 3 to 5, it makes it smaller. It doesn't matter. You could do it either way. Three times uh, negative three times row one added to row two, going into replacing row two. So we're going to have a negative three, negative three, negative three, negative three, zero and zero. So when we add it to this, zero, two. 1, negative 3, 1, 0. I like that. If we multiply the bottom by 2, what will that do for us? We take the bottom times 2. We're not going to change anything on it. So if we do a, a row 3 times 2 and add it to this new row 1, the blue row 1, or blue row 2, we're, gonna, we're, going, to, um, we're going to get rid of this, aren't we? Well, we, we can. It's just that we almost have a 1 here. So we can switch the two rows around. It's OK. The elementary row operation says we can switch rows. OK? So is everyone OK with me writing this one over here? But I'm going to write it as opposite signs. Exactly. Okay. So to simplify this, let's take everybody here times negative 1. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 1. And then we're going to have to switch these two eventually. Yep. So let's do that green. Thank you.
Okay, hey guys, I'm losing you. I'm sorry, but we've got to focus or you're not going to understand this. Okay, side conversations have to stop. All right, so we're going to take this, this row 3 times 2. 0, negative 2, 0, 0, 0, 2. Okay? We're going to add it to this blue row. When we do that, this 2 is going to go away. So we want this to become our new row 3. So if, it's if it will confuse you, I can put it back and then we can replace them. That's okay. You can. As long as you're consistent. Okay? So when I add these two up, 0 and 0 is going to go away. Or it's still 0. Negative 2 and 2 is going to go away and become a 0. 0 and 1 is 1. 0 and negative 3. 0 and 1. 2 and 0. Okay. This is now going to become our new row 2. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 1. And our first row is staying the same for the moment. We'll rewrite it one more time. So we're almost there. That guy's got to change, doesn't it? We want that to be a zero. Yeah. You add, multiplied your bottom one times negative one and added it to your top. Then you're good. Or take top minus bottom and replace top. Okay? So we want a negative one here. This will be a zero, zero, negative one, negative three, or positive three, negative one, negative 2. Okay. We're going to add that to this and replace. So this guy's going to the new top row. 0 and 1, 0 and 0, negative 1 and 1, 3 and 1, one negative 1 and 0, negative 2 and 1. Rewrite this one. I did something wrong. That should be a one, negative one. Thank you. And then last row. Zero, zero, one, negative three, one, two. So what's my inverse matrix? That's my inverse matrix. If I take that inverse matrix times my original, I should get the identity. That's how you check yourself. <laughs> You're not checking yourself? <laughs> You're going to trust yourself that you did it right? So you'd have a 3 by 3 to buy a 3 by 3, get a 3 by 3. Not sure yet. Mm -hmm. So you can check yourself with the calculator, but you still have to do the work. Okay? We're going to talk about this more tomorrow. To find an inverse of a 2 by 2, there is a formula for it using the determinant. 
And then there are applications to this, obviously. And we'll talk about this one as a graphing calculator app because we don't want to deal with these numbers. Okay? Yep. So let me give you the assignment real quick. You were waiting. You were hoping. Waiting, hoping, praying. Need to practice this stuff. Uh, I think we need one after 8-3, so I haven't plotted one out yet. It was supposed to be. It was supposed to be according to the the assignment or the um, UBD. It's supposed to be after eight four. And you guys are. You, from what I saw, you guys did great on chapter three tests. I haven't finished grading it, so I don't know that they needed. We didn't need a lot of time on chapter three. All right, one second, one second, let me.